In this video, we're going to talk about how we create vector artwork for laser cutting, for things like paper laser cuts, for laser cut cards, laser cut artwork, uh, laser cut acrylic, things like that. Starting from a JPEG file or a TIFF file, and what we're going to do is take that image file and bring it into Adobe Illustrator and convert it into a vector file starting using Live Trace and then um, tweaking the subsequent vector lines so that we have something that's uh, good for laser cutting. Now I'll start with a disclaimer that this is not my favorite method for creating vector files for laser cutting and it's fraught with problems and when it works it works and when it doesn't it really doesn't but it can in fact in many cases be a great time saver and a great starting point for creating a vector file. Here's an image that a client gave us that they want to turn into a paper cut. It's a drawing that they did um, with the intention of having this vectorized and um, ready for paper cutting. So the first thing we need to do before we can use this file really is to get more even colors. Um, if we try and if we try and run uh, live trace on this in Illustrator, it's just not going to work. It's going to see all these different variations of gray and even trying to reduce the number of colors that it picks to create a, a live trace drawing. It's just not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by selecting the color that is the most uh, like itself, that has the least variation. And of course, in, in this case, it's going to be white. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up here in Photoshop and select a color range. And we're going to put our eyedropper on white. And we're going to slide it around and we're going to get as much as we can. We can actually afford to do a lot because um, there are very few color variations in this file. So we're going to select all the white areas. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do a Shift F5 to fill those. And we're going to fill the white areas with white. So it's nice and clean and we don't have... Um, any little extra pen marks or straggly marks that will end up being translated in Illustrator as a vector line. Now that we've filled the white areas and we've got those isolated, it's very, very easy for us to go and grab the black by doing a Shift Command or a Shift Apple I on the iMac for inverse, and you're selecting the inverse of what you just had in the white. And we're going to do another Shift F5 in Photoshop select black and the rest of it we're going to fill with black. Now we've got two clean colors and this is the image that we're left with. Now we have a clean black and white image to start with and this is the image that we're going to use in uh, Illustrator's Live Trace to begin to create a vector graphic for laser cutting. You can tell if you zoom in a little bit closer into the file you see that there are a, a lot of little jaggies. It's the drawing's pretty well done, but you get a, a lot of stuff like this that's going to cause all these little things are going to cause problems when you try and actually use Live Trace in Illustrator and create a vector file from this. But uh, we're going to go ahead and run through the exercise and show you uh, some of the problems associated with it and, and uh, how it's done. Before we're going to start a new file here. We're going to call this Paper Cut and we're going to make the file about 10 inches by 12 inches. And we're going to go find that file and we're going to place it in here so that we can um, use it for, for live trace. And we're going to place the file there. Okay. When we run live trace, we're going to want to use a um, black and white logo because what we want to do is we want um, we really want Illustrator to simplify the drawing as much as possible, not look at any color variations, and hopefully ignore some of the grays um, that are in the little spotty areas. Now that we've run Live Trace on that, we're going to expand it. And the first problem that we have is that we have both white space and black space. And what we're really after is the white. All, all these white areas, we're interested in the outlines for those which will become cut lines. The black area, um, we really want to throw away. The problem with having both the white and the black is we may see it, the, the laser sees it different than we do. We may see it as one thing, but the laser sees each one of those lines twice. If we zoom in here, for example, this triangle right here, as it is, the laser will cut once around the white 
and once around the black. So the first thing we're going to do is go into this file here and we're going to find all of the black areas and we're going to remove them. Right now it appears that they are all inside one compound path and we're at least going to try here and see what we get. We're going to take that compound path and we're going to trash it. And sure enough, lo and behold, in one fell swoop we now have all of the outlines of the areas that we want to cut and we rid ourselves of the black. That was actually a very easy example as far as that goes. The next thing we need to do is go into these lines and clean them up a little bit. Now that we've taken all these lines and we've uh, separated the black from the white and we've only kept the part that we want, we're going to select them all. And as we select them all, you look here, we're going to go through the process of starting to fine tune this. And you look here and you'll see that it's it's got some white area here that it goes beyond the area of the leaves that are being cut which means that we've got a piece somewhere straggling that the eye can't see it's too small and there it is so if you was gonna say if you um, if you drag around a little bit like this and try and select areas you'll soon figure out where that straggling piece is and there it is we've got a, a element there that we don't want um, no not that one right there I'm just gonna drag it off the line to see what it is and sure enough it was just a line. The next thing we need to do here is go in and, and zoom in on these lines and look and see how crisp and clear they are and see if we have straggly lines or things that are going to cause us a problem. Here's the problem with trying to use live traced images for vector cutting. As you zoom in on them, well they might look clear from far away, as you zoom in on them you can see in areas like this that we've got little tiny things that are going to cause the, the laser to to make this little glitch right there. It's not a very smooth line all the way through. Um, in some cases you're actually going to get these weird loops, loop backs and things that needed to be uh, things that need to be deleted before you can really um, cut with the file. Most of this looks pretty good, but some of it does look a little bit funky. Once again, one of our tools will select everything here. And one of our tools for cleaning up the uh, paths is to simplify them. Um, but this is the most common problem associated with simplifying a path, is you'll get these little loopy things here. For some reason, when I go to simplify this, um, I, I can't get rid of them at all. and. In, in that case there's really nothing you can do because those if you have to go through a file like this and clean out all those little loops there's it's just gonna take forever it's actually going to be easier to zoom in and manually clean some of these up you can expect a good file a file like this that's been um, that is fairly complex you can expect a file like this to take you know, several hours even to, to clean up but if you're going to be doing commercial paper cuts from this and let's say you're doing in this case 12 by 16 or or even 18 by you know 24 size paper cuts um, it wouldn't take very many of these to amortize the, the time that it would take to um, clean up a, a file as opposed to creating it by scratch however if you want to take the time to create a file by scratch as opposed to trying to use live trace to save time, I can assure you that the file that you create from scratch is always going to have better, cleaner, smoother lines. Um, you're not going to get any of that. See, for a live trace image, you're always going to have to go back in and take care of some of the imperfections that were seen in your hand drawing uh, or the scan that you took of your drawing. That being said, we have managed some very good conversions. As you can see here with a couple of the examples that we have of paper cuts that we've done from um, TIFF files or JPEG files that we converted.